Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jason Matthew. In this video, I am going to talk about one of the uh, major features that is available on Cisco Wireless LAN controller that is RRM, the Radio Resource Management. Radio Resource Management uh, is not a, um, a small feature. Uh, it's not a small feature. It's a com combination of multiple things. When we talk about RRM, RRM is the key feature uh, coming with Cisco WLC and that's the one going to make sure your RF is stable and your RF is able to meet the requirements of your uh, end users and all. Because uh, RF is the key for any wireless deployment and uh, that is completely driven by the RRM algorithm, the radio resource management algorithm uh, running on the WLC. So you have to uh, have... Uh, you, you have to have that uh, right configuration on your RRM, otherwise uh, we are not going to uh, uh, have the better uh, performance on your RF uh, or the client side. The wireless uh, experience will not be good. Before we start uh, looking into RRM steps, I want to uh, give a disclaimer that uh, I'm also an engineer working in uh, wireless technology and uh, I will also do mistakes on RF. So this RF is something that is uh, specific to your environment it's not something i can uh, give you some values or someone can give some values and that can be deployed everywhere across the world it's not like that it's keep varies based on your location based on your site based on your deployment model your rf design all those parameters will come into picture so whatever i'm saying here maybe it's not uh, not going to be applicable for you or maybe i am saying something wrong if you found something uh, wrong from my side please put that on my uh, uh, in the comment session so that uh, others will be able to follow that because i know i am not 100 percent perfect on uh, anything so uh, please uh, put those uh, uh, if you found anything uh, wrong whatever i'm whatever i am saying here please put it on the comments so that uh, others can follow that so let's uh, get started. So before we go into uh, any RRM specific one, the first thing what we have to check is the RF domain. So everything is runs on your RF domain, basically the RF group name. So you can see that under uh, controller page and you can see the RF group name and this is the RF group name. I'm putting it as Cisco RF group, uh, Cisco RF, that's a, a group name. So I have uh, two WLCs here, both are uh, virtual WLCs and uh, this is the WLC1 and this is the WLC2. So here also I am going to put, uh, here also I am going to put this RF group name as a Cisco RF. So uh, because uh, if you want to um, work with RF groups, you need uh, same RF group name everywhere. So I'll, I'll explain a little more about this RF group uh, and how that works in the background. Um, so I have some pictures that can explain this uh, model. Yeah, so this is the uh, first thing you have to make sure that is coming under controller general configuration. Cisco R, um, this RF group name should be uh, same if you are uh, planning to use uh, multiple WLCs. For an example, um, if you have a campus and you have a large uh, user count on that uh, campus and you have multiple uh, WLC is running on the campus with each building have some uh, single WLCs each. If that's a scenario, then um, it's better to uh, have this. So we seen this scenario in a large uh, deployment models. Uh, some people will uh, recommend to have a single WLC that is uh, the highest WLC from uh, Cisco side is supports 64,000 clients. And um, some people uh, recommend to use uh, the highest available hardware with the maximum uh, client capacity. But in some scenarios, they will start using the smaller version of it. So uh, for an example, uh, some people will use 8540, some people will use 3504 and they will split it. So that uh, when they are facing any downtime or issues, uh, this 3504 will be having lesser impact to that side. So basically, wherever you have um, offshore offices, kind of ODC kind of thing, they do this kind of steps. So they will keep the smaller box and uh, even if uh, there is an issue uh, that will be impacting only that particular location or that small building uh, only. 
so if that's a condition your aps will be spread across even though you have multiple wlcs your aps will be spread across multiple um, locations or multiple buildings in the same campus so you have to put everyone into same rf group so that uh, the aps if they are able to uh, listen to each other uh, they are able to uh, work without having any issues so uh, this is the uh, this is one of the picture that shows how this particular uh, rf group works in the background so in this scenario you can see that uh, we have multiple wlc so wlc a and b and uh, and we have multiple aps here so wlc a is participating rf group as uh, group as bob and b is also participating in uh, bob so whenever you have uh, this rf group name uh, configured on the wlc this RF group name will be used as an ASCII uh, character uh, value, ASCII value. Then um, APs attached to this, uh, this one will be sending this uh, RF uh, group information through NDP packet. So you know the uh, network discovery protocol uh, used by the uh, APs, right? So it, it actually sends this data out uh, uh, every uh, based on the interval. Then whenever APs are sending this network uh, discovery uh, packet right so whenever they send this one they will send that packet with the highest power available on that ap and the lowest um, data rate on that ap so so that it will not have much impact on your uh, network side so data uh, because all the aps will be able to listen to that and the la uh, data rate will be the lower one and uh, it will be run, uh, sending it on the full power that is nothing to do with the power level you configured on the uh, ap so maybe uh, the clients are getting served with the power level four, but it will set, but it will uh, send the uh, uh, send the uh, NDP packet uh, with the maximum power available on the AP. So you, you have to uh, keep that in mind. Uh, NDPs are uh, sent on uh, maximum power level uh, with uh, uh, possible data rate, lower lat uh, data rate. All the access points will be uh, receiving all these neighboring packets uh, coming from the neighboring APs because NDP packets are sent by everyone and uh, everyone will get um, uh, NDP packet from others, right? So whenever they are getting um, uh, the um, NDP packet with signal strength below uh, minus 85, it will be uh, dropped by the AP. So this is how this um, uh, RF group uh, functionality works in the background. If you have a single AP, a single uh, WLC, all the APs will be participating in the same group. And if you have multiple buildings and the multiple WLCs, you can put both of them into same RF group so that all the APs will be uh, functioning on that. The other advantage uh, here is uh, by default, standalone WLC will come. Okay, let, uh, let's jump into the uh, RRM specific configuration so that you will get uh, how this RF grouping works in the background. Let me go to the wireless configuration set. So I'm going to wireless and I'm going to cover uh, this particular video only with uh, 802.11a, not uh, BG because I don't want to, because anyway, it's a re uh, repetition. So there are some uh, value differences that you have to keep it in mind. Other than that, um, it's almost same. So in the uh, network side, um, before we go into RRM, we have to check uh, basic functionality of the RF, right? Before we go into uh, RRM specific configurations, let's talk about something about uh, the network parameters. Uh, basically, the network configuration of a Node2.11a. So when you say um, 11a, this is the configuration will be applied to your .11, uh, dot one interface of your AP, the 5 gigahertz uh, radio of your AP. So let's start with that. Um, so first thing, um, this is the global configuration uh, page, uh, global parameters for uh, 802.11a. Then uh, first thing, do you want to enable this radio or not? So I'm going to keep this one disabled because we have to make some changes and uh, uh, GUI will not allow to make any changes if this one is enabled. Uh, so this is the global configuration that uh, enables your radio or disables your radio. Then uh, next one is uh, beacon period. By default, uh, it's 100 millisecond. If you want to uh, reduce or increase, you can do that. So by default, uh, the values are uh, beacon period is uh, 100 millisecond. So each each beacons will be going out of uh, your AP uh, with uh, 100 millisecond interval. So that's a beacon period here. 
then uh, fragmentation threshold uh, this is the fragmentation going to happen on your uh, uh, packets so what is the threshold you have to put it so we have to consider the extra uh, things coming on the the uh, packet header and all those things so considering that uh, it's taking uh, maximum threshold as uh, 2346 bytes so that's the fragmentation threshold so once you reach this uh, threshold it will get fragmented so you can change this value so there is no uh, magic value for this one it's up to you uh, so this is the default value you can change it based on that next one is uh, dtpc support so this is uh, uh, like a specific feature that uh, used for ccx clients so dynamic transmit power control uh, is the feature available for ccx clients only so if you have a ccs client uh, and if it sends a probe request uh, saying that i am a ccx enabled client this APs will be sending uh, uh, the power level information about that AP and uh, uh, and the client will be able to take a decision what is the power level he has to use uh, as a end, uh, end client. So DTPC uh, is the feature uh, uh, users for uh, in the background to adjust your power um, because uh, clients will be aware of the power level APs are working and it will be able to adjust its own power level based on that. So this one is... Um, uh, CCX specific but yeah it's a it's a global configuration on the controller side next one is uh, maximum allowed clients um, so basically how many clients you want to accept on a radio so uh, this one uh, by default its value is 200 and 200 is the maximum uh, if you want to reduce that 200 you can uh, reduce that and uh, keep it uh, as a, a lower one so that you will not have any issues so whenever you are uh, talking about the maximum clients getting connected to your um, SSID or the radio right uh, always think about the airtime that going to be used by uh, used by those APs um, so if you have 10 clients if you have uh, 100 clients if you have 200 clients your airtime is not going to change so it will get split based on the number of clients uh, getting connected to the radio right so we always uh, try to keep that in mind when you are thinking about how many clients we are going to support um, by the AP uh, so airtime is the key so just uh, make sure uh, you are having enough APs to make sure that uh, kind of scenario is taken care so yeah so 200 is the maximum uh, supported and uh, default value is 200 if you want to reduce it you can reduce it next one is RSSI uh, load check um, this is the one feature that uh, available on Cisco w, uh, WLC side to uh, make sure you are not getting clients getting connected from uh, very far away like uh, you have optimized roaming that is a, a different feature so don't get confused with that so optimized roaming is something like you are moving away and uh, you you are pushing that client to uh, join on the other client uh, another ap but here uh, scenario is um, clients will be trying to associate far away from the client uh, ap so for an example your ap is sitting in one location and your client is sitting uh, very far to that particular location and still that client decides that okay this is the ap1 is my uh, best available choice and it will send a uh, join request uh, that association request will come with uh, uh, maybe minus 90 or something minus 90 dbm in that case ap will uh, if this one is enabled and if you put a threshold like 80 uh, this particular ap will reject that request itself the association request it itself will get rejected because of this value so you have to uh, think in that scenario how you design your rf and based on the rf how you are going to uh, support those clients so if you want to see clients coming far away from uh, your ap location uh, means it's far away from the AP RF, uh, RF wise and still it's trying to join uh, if you accept it it's going to impact the entire clients as, uh, getting served by that AP so you know the math right so if you have a uh, client with lower data rate uh, when when these APs are uh, very far from the client your data rate will uh, reduce based on that distance and uh, it will be taking more air, air time to send the traffic so this is the one of the option you can actually stop that kind of uh, scenarios in the starting phase itself you got a request and it says that okay it's more than uh, minus 60 okay done I'm, I'm not going to accept you anymore you try to find a 
a different ap altogether so that's a feature uh, it's a useful feature if you want to use it and if your rf is really um, uh, strong and you are sure that uh, you have another ap to support that uh, client less than uh, this particular rssi then you should do it if you are, if you are not sure about your rf then don't do this it's going to harm your network uh, than helping you in this now let's talk about the data rates. So these are the data rates available on uh, 5G gigahertz. And at the same time, we have uh, data rates on BG and that is uh, 1 to 11. So these are the data rates uh, available here. And uh, in each rate, uh, data rate, you have an option uh, to set, uh, is it supported or uh, mandatory or disabled? So to uh, give better uh, performance, uh, sometimes uh, it will be recommended to disable all these uh, lower data rates because basically how this affects is uh, when you have a lower data rate the time taken for client to transfer the traffic will uh, increase and uh, whatever i explained before the airtime will be impacted with that so airtime is the key in rf uh, so it's keeping the lower data rates enabled will be uh, impacting the other clients getting served by the same ap so it's better to uh, analyze what is your data requirement and based on that uh, you set a value so when you set the values you have um, three values one is disable disable means no client will be able to associate to this particular radio if this is the only supported uh, data rate for that client so disable means that so all these three will not be able to um, uh, uh, join on this uh, on this radio basically then uh, next one is supported uh, supported means um, uh, you can see 18 mbps and 36 and 54 so we are saying all these data rates are supported so clients coming from that side will be able to associate uh, with any of these uh, uh, speeds and uh, mandatory means uh, if you are a client, if you want to connect to this radio, you should support this mandatory data rate. Means your client should be capable enough to support this 24 Mbps. Otherwise, you are not allowed to connect to this network. So that's a um, that's a whole idea about uh, data rates. Next one is uh, uh, CCX location measurement. So this is one uh, Cisco proprietary protocol uh, comes with uh, CCX enhancements. So if your client supports CCX version two or above, um, this particular one is enabled, then it will be able to, AP will be able to send a radio uh, broadcast measurement uh, request to the client and it will be able to use that. So for that, we have to do uh, some customization on the AP side. So anyway, that um, is not a normally used uh, feature in most of the places. By default, it's disabled. So this is used for um, uh, sending that uh, extra information to CCX based clients. Now, th these are the global configuration or global parameters on uh, the radio side. Uh, we will uh, stop it here. Uh, this video is becoming uh, very lengthy. So, I don't want to continue with uh, bigger lengthy videos. Instead of that, I will uh, try to concentrate on the smaller portions and uh, uh, make it useful for everyone. So, uh, I'll stop it here. Uh, we will uh, continue from here uh, uh, in the next video. Thank you for watching.